Hi, I'm James Green. I'm James Green. I'm not James Green. Let's try, try again. Hi, I'm Karen Sherwood. I'm director of uh, Coppola Gallery, and I'm here today with James Green in his exhibition works, 2018 to 2020. So we're here to have a bit of a chat, just to find out, you know, where all this work's come from, and um, you know why he's put this collection together. So, James, um, you've been printmaking for 16 years. Yeah, true. How has your work developed uh, over that time, and how have we got to where we are today? It's a good question, really. I'm not really sure, but I, I started off printmaking just as an experiment, basically, 16 years ago. I had no idea what I was doing. So, uh, <laughs> so Was this a college or prior to college? No, or? no. Well, this is after. I did a, a fine art degree. Right. I didn't do any printmaking on that. None at all? Uh, no. I didn't know you could. I, nobody, <laughs> wow. nobody told me, unfortunately. <laughs> but maybe that's good. Maybe that, yeah. I discovered it for myself a few yeah. years later. Okay. And I borrowed some lino tools off my mother-in-law. And uh, I had a go, and then, and, you know, this sort of light bulb, you know, appeared in my head. I was oh, like, wow. this is what I need to be doing. I love printmaking. This is so much more interesting than painting or photography or sculpture. Nice. Or okay. So that's what I started off doing. Um, but yeah, for the, for, for the first year or so, I just experimented with printing anything, really, just trying to... All line of cut or different it was processes? All line, it was all oh. line over, lots of different subjects, you know, some things that weren't very good, some things that are quite light. And I think eventually I sort of started to create these uh, paths that I like to, to work on. So right. some of it was landscape work. I, right. I really like doing landscape work. I, I live in Mearsbrook in Sheffield, right. and that's quite a hilly place. So, yes. well, that's a lot of places in Sheffield. <laughs> Sheffield that's but, true. But, but, but I, I did a, a print um, yeah. looking down through through the valley in Mearsbrook, and right. I just loved it. I, I loved all the little windows and chimneys and everything. So, right. I really so they were they were kind of urban or populated landscapes. Bit of both, bit right. of everything. I right. love the sort of contrast between the urban and the. Um, suburban and the sort of rural side of things. Right. Okay. Um, so I, I so I really got into that, but at the same time, um, I really like doing uh, wildlife prints as well. Okay. Because it's just stuff that's around you, like birds and yeah. you know uh, plants and all kind of stuff that you see around you. And I love sort of trying to translate that into lino cut. Okay. So I've. I've been doing that ever, ever since, you know, finding new creatures to... to well, to uh, absolutely. Oh, obviously, as your printmaking, uh, you know, developed and you realised you had a passion for it, did you seek out other printmakers? Did you look to see what other people were doing in order to, you know, create your own style? Or did your style just happen? I think... It's a bit hard to say because you do take on sort of influences subconsciously, even if yeah. you don't necessarily choose to. Yeah. I didn't really know any printmakers when I started. Right. I think I really got into printmaking because I had some records that had been hand printed on the sleeves. Oh, right. And I really okay. liked that, some like letterpress stuff, uh, foil box press, things like that. And that's what really got me started, this okay. more of a graphic design kind of thing. Okay, because um, there is quite a lot of graphic elements in your work. Yeah. So that's, that's quite interesting. And, and obviously you have a distinctive style because people can look at your work and go, oh, that's James Green. And that's, that's really, um, it's a thing every artist wants, actually, somebody to look at their work and go, I recognise who made that. Because obviously there's a lot of you know, printmakers out there, there's a lot of artists. And so to actually have developed a recognisable, distinctive style, I think is, um, you know, to, you ought to be congratulated. <laughs> I think it's something that's almost... It's, it's nothing I necessarily work out, you know, I didn't seek it. Yeah. It's just something that happens, I suppose. Yeah. And I look at some of my work compared to other bits of my work, yeah. and I can't really see many links. Yeah. But that's just because it's me, because yes, I'm inside it all. I'm yeah, thinking. yeah, yeah. But, but um, I mean, some of my later, latest prints, like the stone composition prints, yes. I don't really think they have a huge amount in common with, say, the donkey prints and things like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but other people say they do, you know, they can see the colours are similar and some of the sort of yeah. the graphic elements are similar, yeah. which is nice to hear. Yeah. It's, it's, it's something that I, yeah, it's nice to know that I developed a style. Yes. But it, it's never anything that I, I was like from the start going, I'm going to develop this style and this is all I'm going to do. Yeah, yeah. Because I think if you do that. Well, you can have pigeonhole. Yeah, yourself, you don't, I don't want to pigeonhole. Really. Myself. No, no, no. So, um, 
So obviously the, the donkeys um, came out of your interest in wildlife and all the rest of it. Yeah. Is that, is that correct? It, it is, but it's taken a slightly different path. Yes. I think I did a donkey print about 12 years ago called Donkeys Disturbed by Meteor Shower. <laughs> and it was, it was a slightly absurd... I kind of, yes. kind of had the idea as a, as, as a title before I actually turned it into a print. And yes. I, and I created this print and I rather liked it. It's rather yeah. tiny line over. Yeah. Um, and then I, did, I got into the idea of, of trying to represent donkeys because I felt they're a bit underrepresented in the art world. Yes, as, no, as, that's as, true. As, as in the real world too. Yeah. So it's sort of that's been part. I mean, of Jesus life. made donkeys pretty famous. Well, I suppose, yeah. <laughs> Some people think my work is religious, but it's not at all. There's no right. sort of there's no, there's no festival religious context in the donkeys at all. Yeah. I just I just think they're underrepresented. I uh, like their sort of slight awkwardness. I think. Okay. I, I like, yeah, yeah. I, maybe I feel bit of a kid to that but um and but it's interesting yeah. I mean you said that donkey um is surprised by a meteor shower yeah which immediately becomes kind of a fantasy image yeah. doesn't it and of course starting with Mearsbrook and ending up with a donkey fantasy is but it's interesting isn't it do you think that you know comes with confidence like you know the more you do you want to you know you're pushing ideas Taking a bit of uh, more risks, maybe. Yeah, maybe. I, I don't know. It seems sometimes it seems like these compositions sort of develop themselves, um, especially the donkey ones, because the donkeys live in this world which is a bit odd. Yeah. It doesn't have any other creatures in it. No. Um, but it gives me a license to sort of explore yeah, as yeah, they yeah. explore the landscapes yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah. So it's I'm not really. A, an abstract artist, I think, yes. I say, but it gives me a, a, a feeling that I can explore more of abstract forms. Yeah, yeah, because uh, some, certainly some of the donkey monoliths that we've got here hmm. are on abstract forms, um, some quite, um, you know, really quite abstract, um, and but some more like have an organic form feel. Um, but they do take you into a fantasy world, you know, it's like, well, what are the donkeys doing? What are the things? And what are the donkeys doing there? And why are they there? It doesn't matter. No. I mean, they're still they're visual images, and but it it can take you on a bit of a you know a journey. Well, that's you can exactly. Have think about it. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. what I was aiming for. Really, it's yeah. like what is going on. <laughs> like, uh, you, you either put yourself in the in the mind of the donkey that's in the landscape, or yeah. you just question it yeah. and you wonder what is going on. And I like that. And the, the, the fact that some of these are sort of slightly abstract sculptural forms yeah. is because I'm a big fan of uh, abstract sculpture like Brahma Hepworth, yes. Henry Moore, people yes. like that. And I, uh, I don't know, I wanted to somehow feel like I was doing some sculptural work and also creating a, a, a landscape which felt almost solid and 3D and yeah. explorable. That's yeah, my, yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I'm not a sculptor at all. I, I always did have hopes. <laughs> when I studied sculpture, I was rubbish at it. But I, I got some. These are all based on plasticine models that I made. I love that. Um, I love that. So, so when I, did you start making the plasticine model? It was about a year and a half ago. Right. And I, I had so much fun just making these things out of black plasticine. And you know, I was just in my mind, I was like pretending that I was Barbara Hepburn. <laughs> um, Why wouldn't you? Yeah, so, <laughs> And I had such a great time making these things, and then, and then I thought, well, I need to use the, uh, you know, use these as a basis for the mm. rhino cuts, and it was great. It was really informative, and it made me, I suppose, come up with things that wouldn't look like they do right now. And you know, I've got about another seven or eight more sculptures that I've made since these ones. That I'm, I can't wait to turn it to print. So, so would would you ever exhibit the sculptures as well? Oh, I don't know. They're made out of plasticine, so they're a little bit. Uh, well, would you consider, soft. you know, having a go in clay or...? Well, I, interestingly enough, I have started making some clay donkeys. Right. Just as an experiment, because, um, I'm, but they haven't been fired yet, so they might just explode <laughs> it. You know, well, they might, they yeah, might. But, but it's, it's really interesting learning about um, the process behind, you know, the ideas and stuff, because obviously, you know, making sculptures that kind of link into the don donkey monoliths, but then with your stone compositions that we've got in the in the exhibition mm -hmm. as well, um, 
they are from real stones. Yeah. Yeah. And so there, there is obviously um, a very clear connection to a physical object to make them yeah. the prints, which is, which is quite interesting because, yes, they are distinctly two different bodies of work, but you're making sculptures to inform these and then you're picking up real sculptural forms mm. to inform the, um, the stone yeah. uh, collections, um, which is, I, I think that is really interesting. So you've got an interest in 3D form mm. and then you are recreating that on a flat plane. Yeah. And I mean, I, I'm, I always, for me, printmaking is a bit of a dark art. I am so a painter <laughs> uh, because I can't cope with backwards and layers and yeah. processes. I'm like, oh. So I, I do think that's a really interesting um, uh, process for, for me that you're, I mean, maybe clearly all printmakers do it. We're looking at a 3D world and we're creating a, you know, a 2D um, image, yeah. um, but um, I think uh, no. I just really like the way different artists work and different artists bring you know their own processes to the work. But kind of moving from um, the donkey monoliths, which often have, I mean, all the work um, has um, usually a fairly limited color palette, yes. but. The stones in this lot, they there are quite a few layers there, and there's yeah. some bright. I mean, stones not aren't often red and orange and pink and green and yellow. No. Um, so, how did those color choices come out with the stone composition? Well, it all started when I, um, I, I basically all the stone images are from drawings that I did on beaches around the UK, from North Wales. Uh, Yorkshire coast and from Cornwall and I just sat and drew lots and lots of stones and they do have colour in them yes, but I've clearly it, I, yes. I, I've, I've, I've played with that though and I've exaggerated the, the inherent colours that yes. are in the stones um, because I, I well I wanted to create these rather strange uh, compositions mm -hmm. and I suppose in a, again to create something which is kind of abstract but also kind of not because the marks that I've made are trying to sort of represent the, the marks that are naturally found on the stones, but also I've blown them up scale-wise as well, so the marks look quite odd, look quite chunky yeah, yeah, in places. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, I just love playing with it as well. It was, yeah. it was uh, actually the, the, the initial idea for, for, for the stone project was to do something completely different from what I normally do. Yeah. Um, or what you're known for yeah, doing. For, yeah, yeah. So what, what I'm known for doing. So that's why I did it. So a lot of them are a lot bigger than I normally work or have worked uh, previously. So that was quite a challenge. Also, colour-wise, I think some of them are seven colours and normally I work two or three colours. Yeah. So again, that was quite a, you know, I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, <laughs> but, but like, More, I mean. Yeah, so I, uh, I tried to plan it out as best I could, but, you know, yeah. as you probably know with printmaking, you're never completely in control of the process yeah, or what the colours yeah, are actually going to look yeah, like. Yeah. But that was great because it was quite exciting, you know, yeah. when you're you know, doing screen prints. You know, you, you don't really know what one colour is going to look like on top of another yes. colour and that's, that's great. So the process was fascinating. I absolutely love the process of making so it. So do you think there's going to be more stones? I believe you've just been on holiday. Have you collected yeah, some more? Yeah, <laughs> well, I've done some more drawings of some stones. Right. Um, they might not be as colourful the new ones, I think. Um, it might, might be more based on mark making and, and right. tone. Right, um, right, right. But yeah, I'm definitely going to do some more. I, I just love it. Yeah. it. It is. It is really interesting because many, many people, myself included, have a tendency to collect stones yeah. um, when, when I go on holiday off beaches. I don't know what it is about us. We, we, there's something nice about a pebble or a stone. Well, they're not little works of art, aren't they? Yeah. They're, they're like little sculptures that you find. You know, yeah. you know, if you're, if you're an in, interested in, say, uh, Henry Moore or Hepworth or someone like that, yeah. and you look at their work. They're they're very similar to yeah. some of the natural forms that you can find, and definitely. these these amazing marks that you can find on them. There's a definite yeah. definite parallel. Because because this is it. They're clearly stones, but they then they're, they're not. So that's why you're drawn into the the stone images because then you do look at the marks and you do look at the colours and and then you start thinking about the textures of the stones mm. and you know um, I like to pick up smooth stones but then again they're not 100% smooth they're smooth on the outside but they've all got these little crevices in mm. and 
and kind of fault lines and where things have rubbed away and and I think you know uh, what's in interesting about the stone compositions that you've got here there's a cut well there's one large one that is probably the most abstracted so it, it they're the flattest images if you like but then that then then that's curious because you've drawn to them because of the flatness so you've got things that look more 3d and then you've got things that look flatter but then you know the colors kind of push and pull you in yeah. terms of the way you look at them and um you know, the way that you've laid them together, overlaid or separate, again, makes you consider each piece. And um, I, I really enjoy that. And of course, um, I instantly assume that even on the large ones, these are small that have been made bigger. But that may be wrong. No, that's true. <laughs> they, are, they are all small because I could, yeah, yeah, I suppose I could draw some massive stuff. I am drawn to the, the little tiny ones, so mostly. Yeah. And, and the idea of blowing them up is yes. quite an interesting thing for me, especially mm. working. Well, with the marks. Yeah, because stuff. the mark, well. the marks that you, that you make uh, when they're tiny, they look so different when they're blown up. They look really bold, and I quite like that. They're almost, that's almost taken away from what you did originally. Okay. So the, when you draw and then when you print, are your drawings kind of leaning towards what your prints look like? Or are they quite realistic and then they're translated into print? Because you could, of course, take photographs, but drawing yeah. is, is a different way of recording those images. I, I'm trying to draw them. I think sometimes I'll take a longer time. If I've got a stone that's got loads of detail in it, I'll take a little bit longer to... Uh, to record some of the detail and the shape and some of them will be I'll, I'll do much more quickly so I think it's a combination of the both right um, to, to you know to create the the image I mean I did a lot more drawings and there are prints as well so there's oh, yeah. um, you know I just chose the ones that I felt thought fitted together best yeah um, and you know it's just playing basically playing with the shapes playing with the, the textures and the colors um, and, and to see what works out, you know, there was Absolutely. no, I wasn't trying to achieve anything necessarily, it was just, yeah. it was just fun. Yeah, well, that's, it's, the thing is, if you, if you have fun making artwork, often that is expressed in the, in the work itself, mm -hmm. you know, which is great. Now, I believe you have a favourite stone composition, don't you? Um, yeah, that's probably one of these two. Over What's here. it called? Stone, stone composition number two. So, oh, well. Right. One, one Do you two. know why? Why? Why is it? I don't. I think when I was just playing around with the composition, it, it just it almost fell in the right place. Right, right, right. And uh, I was like, I, I quite like that. That I didn't have to. Yeah. Sometimes you have to work for ages yeah, to get something yeah, to work, yeah, yeah. and then suddenly some. You know, it, you know I'm sure you know with your painting. Yes. Sometimes, yes. Sometimes, sometimes you have a happy accident. They go, oh, hang on. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that works so much better than anything I've, I've tried to do. And, and some of the marks on it as well were actually yeah. accidental. So the dark green parts there, yeah. they were actually supposed to be solid originally. Mm. But for some reason, when I when I was cleaning the, the silt screens, yeah. uh, some some of the some of the emulsion came off. And when I printed, I was like, well, that actually, I like that. That actually yeah. looks better than it would have if it had been solid. So it was, yeah. a, it was a nice happy accident. And that 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 is great. And that is you know you you have to make them. Yeah. You have to keep, you know, making stuff for for those happy accidents to happen, yeah, yeah. which is which is wonderful. Well, um, the exhibition carries on till the twenty second of August. So if you haven't been, come along, <laughs> and we look forward to seeing you. So we have framed works uh, in the exhibition and unframed works available as well. The editions are all relatively small. Um, and so, you know, don't miss out. <laughs> Is there anything else you'd like you'd like to say about the work or the work you've chosen for, for this particular show? Uh, I'm not sure really. Well, there was one print that we haven't mentioned. It was a collaboration with yes. John Pedder, who's, yes. who, who's also got the exhibition on downstairs at yes. the moment. And that was fun to work with because I've, I've known John for quite a few years now. Yeah, yeah. Um, very but, different styles. Yeah, very yeah. different styles. But I do absolutely love his work and I've got three of his prints at home already. Oh, so. wow, well, that's but, wonderful. But uh, I've known John for a long time before I even knew he was a printmaker. But um, anyway, but, um, <laughs> but uh, it, was, it was fun. We worked on a collaboration print, uh, which was based on one of his prints called Seven Hills, I think. Yeah. So I put a donkey on... Uh, on one of the, one of the hills 
Um, well, there's three different variations. Yeah, there's three different variations, yeah. three different donkeys. <laughs> I'm, sure you get, I'm sure you get the idea. But that was great to somehow yeah. uh, work together on something, and it worked really well, I thought. I think, I think it's really lovely as well, because people have definitely enjoyed the, the donkey in Seven Hills. Uh, a, because it roots it in Sheffield, which is, mm. which is quite nice. But the fact that it's a woodcut, a lino cut, and a silk screen. Yep. So I tell people, you've got you know three in one and two artists. How can you not want to buy it? It's fantastic. Yeah, it so, be more. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Which you know, which is which is really good. Do you think you, you'll collaborate again? Uh, what with John? I don't know John uh, or anybody else. Yeah, yeah. I love collaborations. I, I did another collaboration with another guy called Andy Poplar right. earlier in the year who does uh, letterpress. And that's Excellent, great yeah. too. And you know, yeah, if I like someone's work and yeah, yeah. it feels like it might fit, then absolutely. Yeah. Oh, I think that's great because you also skill share as well, don't you, to yeah. a certain extent, which is which is wonderful. Well, thank you very much for talking to us today, and um, come along, people, to the exhibition. Okay. Cool.